Section 14.5 is called Triple Integrals, and let me start this section by emphasizing that this is not your typical lesson. This one was recorded in class and the program messed up, and so what you're going to see is all of my details actually already worked out. I'll work through some of it with you out loud, um, but you may have to pause the video several times in order to get the details written down um, since I won't be writing while you're working as well. All right, so the first thing we're gonna take a look at um, and talk about is um, that we're going to develop this idea of triple integrals, much the way we developed the idea of double integrals. Um, and so while this is in 4D, we don't have a, a visual picture um, to relate this back to. But this is where we start with this definition, and it looks much like, of course, the definition when we did double integrals. So for any function f of x, y, z, defined on the rectangular box q, we can define the triple integral of f over q by the following. This is a limit as the partition size goes to zero of the summation from i equal one to n of f of u sub i, v sub i, w sub i, delta v sub i, and that is a capital V sub i in the end for volume, provided that the limit exists and is the same for every choice of evaluation points, u i, v i, w i, in q i, and this for, um, is for i equal one up to n, and when this happens, we say that f is integrable over g, I'm sorry, over q. Now, what we did next when we developed double integrals is we actually used um, basically Riemann sums, and, and we evaluated at different evaluation points, in particular maybe the center of a rectangular pure, uh, prism, or maybe on one of the corners of the rectangular prism, and then we added several things together and so forth. We're not going to do that in this section. We're actually going to jump straight into the integration. So this is Fubini's theorem. Again, it's a version of it um, outside of what we've seen in, um, in uh, double integrals. So we're gonna suppose that f of x, y, z is continuous on the box Q and it's defined in the following way. So the point x, y, z such that um, x is between a and b, y is between c and d, and z is between r and s. We can write the triple integral over Q then as the integral from r to s, from c to d, and from a to b of f of x, y, z, and then dx, dy, dz. What you're going to see as I did this, and you see the red boxes everywhere, of course, is that I'm just sort of emphasizing that um, we're going to need to be careful with our limits of integration. So identifying which piece goes with what, of course, works. It's sort of inside out, kind of like when you're working with parentheses. Now, this is specifically over a, 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 a box, Q, as it's defined. But in general, um, we don't necessarily have to have just numerical coefficients for the A, B, C, um, R, and S, and D, sorry. Um, so in general, the triple integral, um, the outer limit is numerical values, A and B. And this doesn't necessarily have to be the X is the outer limit of integration. The integration might go in any, any, any order. This has to be written in one way or another, so this is the way that it, it's, I've chosen to write it. So this is the integral from A to B of the integral from h1 of x to h2 of x, so that's a function of y in terms of x, and then this, the integral, that's the innermost integral, is g sub 1 of x and y, that's a function z, um, to g sub 2 of x and y. All right, so we're going to do an example, and we're going to do an example first that just has the numbers, so it's going to be more like the very first um, description on that last slide. So we're going to evaluate the triple integral where the function is f of x, y, z, which is 2x plus y plus z. And the q value goes um, between, the value of x is between 0 and 2, the value of y is between negative 2 and 2, and the value of z is between two, 0 and 2. Now you'll see that I've set this up in a particular order. Um, there is nothing that has to be done in this order. We could t put these in here in any particular order we'd like, actually. Now, I do like the idea of having the y value as the last integral I take, and the reason is because it doesn't have a lower limit of zero. Lower limits of zero with polynomial functions are very nice um, because plugging in zero makes the whole thing zero, so that's very friendly. So I kind of like to avoid having to plug in two limits of integration on two inner integrals. Um, now, you can see on that very first line after I've integrated it, I've boxed in the, the innermost integration in pink. The next thing I did when I was working this particular problem is that I worked my way down to taking that integration. So the integration of 2x plus y plus c in terms of x is x squared plus xy plus xc. 
and then I'm going to evaluate that from 2 down to 0. And if I, so if I plug in the number 2, I get 4 plus 2y plus 2z. And what I next did is I actually went back and put in those limits of integration from negative 2 to 2 and 0 to 2, and the dz dy is at the edges. So I kind of avoided doing those in piece by piece. So in other words, the in-between step that you're not seeing, since this is a static screen at this point, looked originally like this, x squared plus xy plus xz, and then I evaluated and I got 4 plus 2y plus 2z, um, and then I went back and I put in the two limits of integration on each of them with the dx and dz, at the, or dy and dz at the end. So that's the step that you're not seeing the, the pattern of how I processed it in order, but, but that is the idea of what's going on there. All right, so taking a look then, um, we would do the integration a second time. Again, now I've highlighted again, or boxed in again in pink, the inner integral, which goes from 0 to 2 again. And now this is in terms of z. So with z, I'm going to get 4z plus 2zy, or 2yz, plus z squared. And I'm going to evaluate that between 2 and 0. And if I do, I get 12 plus 4y. So this is the piece of information I have right now. 12 plus 4y, and um, then I went back and I put in the integral from negative 2 to 2, so dy, um, and we take the antiderivative of that, which is 12y plus 2y squared, and we evaluate from 2 down to negative 2, um, we get it 32 minus negative 16, or 48. All right, the next one is much more complicated, a lot more writing on the screen, as you can tell. Um, so to start out with taking a look at the top above the blue um, above the blue line, it says f of x, y, z is the function 3x plus 2, minus 2y, two and q is the tetrahedron. So remember, tetrahedron is a uh, triangle-based pyramid. This is a tetrahedron bounded by 4x plus y plus 3z equals 12, and the coordinate planes. Now the coordinate planes, as you can see written in red underneath that, means that x, y, and z are each one individually greater than or equal to 0. So we're in the first octant, in other words. All right, so the first thing we have to do on a problem like this is we have to figure out what are my limits of integration. And my limits of integration are coming from this particular sort of kind of like a constraint function here defined, uh, defining my tetrahedron. So taking a look at that, what we're going to do is we're going to figure out one of the variables in terms of the others. Um, now, if you'd like, we could have solved for a different one. The one that we chose to solve for in class was z. So z equals negative 4 thirds x minus one-third y plus four. And if you use that, um, then you've also, oh, and then you've also got z is equal to zero as the other constraint. Now, because we're in octant one, obviously the z equals zero is the lower value, and the negative four-thirds x minus one-third y plus four is the upper limit of integration. So my innermost um, integral has those limits of integration, and it's dz. All right, so working my way outward now, basically I want to restrict my, my vision to the xy plane. So if I restrict my vision to the xy plane, then z is 0, which means I get this equation of 4x plus y minus, or equals 12. Um, if I solve that for y, I get y equals negative 4x plus 12, so that's my upper limit, and have y equals 0 as my lower limit. Um, and so that's my second integral limits that I'm going to be working with. And then finally, um, if you do in fact let y equal to 0, um, then you will find that the upper limit of integration for x is actually x equals 3. So you have x equals 3 and you have x equals 1 actually as well. So my outermost limit of integration goes from 0 to 3. Now the integration isn't what makes this particular step hard. Well, there's a couple of these even missing right now. dy, x, uh, dz, dy, dz on each of those. dy, dx on each of those, excuse me. Okay. Um, the integration is not what makes this particularly challenging. It's actually um, the algebra that makes this a fairly messy problem. So if you take a look at the innermost integral, we have a limit of integration that has got two fractions in it, which makes it kind of messy. Um, now, the integration itself is with respect to z. So 3x would be times z and negative 2y would be times z. Or you could just write it as the quantity 3x minus 2y times z. And then plugging in the upper limit of integration for z, that is the negative 4 thirds x minus 1 third y plus 4, we'd have to multiply that times the 3x minus 2y. 
and that isn't very friendly. So even when we were working this one in class, um, I actually sort of jumped the gun and told the students um, exactly what this would be because we can work it out on scratch paper on our, on our own, recognizing that algebra is not exactly the crucial point of what we're looking at this for. So um, in doing so, we found out that that integration um, actually simplifies to 12x plus 1 third xy minus 4x squared minus 8y plus 2y cubed, 2 thirds y cubed squared. Um, and the next thing that we're going to do then is we're going to integrate that a second time. So we're going to integrate that now um, with respect to y, and the limits of integration are from 0 to negative 4x plus 12. So the integration of each of these components with y would end up being 12xy plus 1 sixth xy squared minus 4x squared y minus 4y squared plus 2 ninths y cubed. And of course I'm supposed to be evaluating this with negative 4x plus 12 in 4y. And that's, that's actually quite messy, not just sort of messy, because I've got a cubic involved in this to boot. Um, not just even a quadratic, but I've got a quadratic to plug it into and a cubic to plug it into. Now again, scratch work on the side sheet paper. Um, if you plug that number in for each of the y's and you square and cube in their respective locations, multiply by the values that are already there, you actually end up with negative 192 plus 264x minus 112x squared plus 136 over 9x cubed. Um, and then we're going to take an integral one more time. We get 192x, negative, sorry, plus 132x squared minus 112 over 3 x cubed plus 34 over 9 x to the fourth. We evaluate that from 3 down to 0. Now this is a very good example. Obviously plugging in the number 0 is not a big deal, but because of the fractions and this being kind of as messy as it is, this is a case where I might put this into the grapher and put this in y1. So plug in that equation exactly as you see up here into y1, and then either use my table to plug in the number 3, or back in my regular screen put in y1, parenthesis 3, and end parenthesis. In e either way we do that, or even if we do it by hand, we will get that the integration value is actually negative 90. All right, example number three, we're going to start out with a function f of x, y, z, which is uh, defined to be 2x in this case. And q is actually bounded by some curves. It's not a tetrahedron this time. This is actually a little bit easier problem to work with. Um, it's bounded by the curve z equals y squared and z equals 4, x equals 0, and x plus z equals 6. Now, we need to start with either the equation x equals, I'm sorry, x plus z equals 6 or x equals z equals, sorry, y squared as my innermost um, integration. Um, and the reason we need to start with that um, as our place to start is because we've got an equation in each case of one variable in terms of another one, or at least we can have that. So when I did this problem, I actually chose to work with the x plus z equals 6 and to do my innermost um, area, or innermost uh, integral with respect to um, x. So I did x, which means I need to solve x equals 6 minus z for x. So I solved that. Um, so it was um, going to be um, the line, that diagonal sort of line that you're seeing, the arrow pointing to there in the picture. And because I've got x in terms of z, I elected in my picture to draw the z on the lower axis and the x on the upper axis. You certainly wouldn't have to do that. Um, but I did want to draw that picture to recognize or to make sure that I understood which equation that I'm using is greater than or above the other one. So if you'll notice when you're looking at 6 minus the x squared, um, the, uh, the, the, horizon, the horizontal line at x equals to 0 is actually beneath the um, diagonal line at 6 minus z. So my limits of integration, 0 is my lower limit, and my 6 minus z is my upper limit, and this is an integral with respect to dx. Um, after that, um, we actually have to look at the other sets of equations, the z equals y squared and the z equals 4. So z equals y squared, again, I'm going to make the z as my vertical axis since it's in terms of the z being the dependent variable, and my independent variable y, squared, y as the horizontal axis. Um, and then that equation, of course, looks like a parabola. So z equals y squared is a parabola opening upwards. And the line z equal 4 is a horizontal line at height 4. Um, so it's cutting through. So clearly the 4 in this case is actually above the y squared. So the y squared is my lower limit and the 4 is my upper limit. And this is with respect to z. To z. So we have dz as our next um, 
next uh, limit of integration we're finding with respect to z. The last one then is going to be dy. We're going to have to look at the y variable. And so using that last diagram that we drew, you can see that my y variable actually starts at negative 2 and it ends at positive 2 if you read the graph you know, sort of from left to right. Um, and you can base that on just where those two curves intersect. Where, in other words, where does y squared equal to 4? Um, and that's at 2 and negative 2, of course. So as we're coming over here then to set this up for this integration, we have the integral from negative 2 to 2, the integral from y squared to 4, and the integral from 0 to 6 minus c of 2x dx dz dy. And we'll start inside. And so we want the integral of 2x with respect to x. So that's x squared. And we're going to evaluate x squared at 6 minus z and at 0. So if we evaluate it at 6 minus z, that means I have the quantity 6 minus z squared, uh, which is actually 36 minus 12z plus z squared. Um, and then we evaluate at 0, of course we get nothing. So then we get to evaluate a second time. Um, so we're going to integrate first um, with respect to z this time, and that pink rectangle you see that we're doing dz. So my integral with respect to z is 36z minus 6z squared plus 1 third z cubed. And we're going to evaluate from 4 down to y squared. So this is one of those cases, again, in class where I just you know, jump to the solution, if you will, for that evaluation. So if you evaluate the number 4 plugged in, you actually get 208 over 3. Um, and then the rest of it you can do pretty, pretty straightforward. Um, um, so if you put in the y squared, in other words, you get minus 36y squared plus 6y to the 4th and then minus 1 third y to the 6th dy. Integrate that one more time with respect to y, we get 208 over 3y minus 12y cubed plus 6 fifths y to the 5th minus 121st y to the 7th. Evaluate it 2 down to negative 2. So the way that I would do this in my calc is, is to use my calculator. I'd actually put this equation into y1 and all the variables in as though they were x's. And then the main screen of my calculator, I would do y1 um, and then the parentheses of 2, the upper limit, minus y1 of the lower limit, negative 2. So it would end up looking like this in my calculator. Something like that. Uh, and then if we do that, it'll actually evaluate the whole thing for us. It gives us an ugly decimal expansion, which we can turn back into a fraction, because clearly this is a fractional form, just looking at the equation to begin with, or the expression to begin with that I'm working with. So we get 42, I'm sorry, 52, 48 over 35. All right, our last example we're going to do is actually going to be finding the volume of a certain surface. Um, the details that we are given about our surface is that it's um, not the volume of surface, the volume of the solid bounded by the surface. Um, the surfaces that we are given is x equals y squared, x equals 4, z equals 2 plus x, and z equals 0. And again, kind of like on the last one, we, we get to pick where we start. Do we want to start with x equals y squared and x equals 4? Or do you want to start with z equals 2 plus x and z equals 0? So when I was working the problem, we chose to do the z equation first. So the z equals 2 plus x and z equals 0. So we drew this with um, z as our vertical axis and x as our horizontal axis. So z equals 0 is the x-axis. Um, and then the line um, for... It's actually a surface, but in two dimensions it looks like a line um, for x plus 2 or 2 plus x is drawn there. And so you can actually see, and the purpose for doing this is seeing that the x plus 2 lies above um, the x equation. So I've got 0 as my lower limit and 2 plus x or x plus 2 as my upper limit. And dz is what I'm finding the surface um, or the first integration with respect to. So working our way outward from there, the other equations that I need to draw um, are with respect to x and y. So we've got um, the x-axis, the y-axis drawn as standard. You could draw it reversed if you really wanted to, uh, but we're pretty comfortable with that notation. And so my x equals y squared is this sideways opening parabola to the right, and the line x equals 4 is the vertical line that I've drawn in red there. Um, and so in the area that's trapped between them, um, you know, the, the x equation is clearly above the, um, the x equals 4 equation, excuse me, is clearly above the x equals y squared equation. So 4 is my upper limit, and y squared is my lower limit on the variable x. Um, and then finally, my variable y would actually have to go from the lower value of y here, which is at negative 2, again, 
because those two surfaces actually intersect at negative 2 uh, in the xy plane. They intersect at x equals um, 4 and y equals 2 or y equals negative 2. So my lower limit of integration is negative 2 and my upper limit of integration is positive 2. And then taking a look at solving these equations, we're actually going to integrate. Or solving these, this uh, solving this equation, we're actually going to integrate. So the integral, of course, of dz is simply z, and we evaluate it at 2 plus x. So we're plugging in the 2 plus x for z. Uh, and then we're going to integrate 2 plus x with respect to x. So that's going to be 2x plus 1 half x squared. And we're going to evaluate that at 4. And if we plug in the number 4, we will get 16. Subtraction of evaluating that in at y squared. So if I plug in y squared, I end up getting then minus 2y squared minus 1 half y to the fourth. Last step is we're going to integrate that with respect to y. So if we integrate that with respect to y, we get 16y minus 2 thirds y cubed minus 1 tenth y to the fifth. And again, we're going to evaluate from 2 down to negative 2, and I'd use the calculator and the y1 feature, so I'd plug this equation into y1, and of course the y's that I would plug in as the letter x. And then the regular screen, I would do y1 of 2 minus y1 of negative 2. And if you do that, turn it back into a fraction, you'll end up finding that your answer is 704 over 15. So that's the end of this lesson. The homework for this section is problems on page 946, problems 2, 5, 11, 14, 24, 28, and 31.